Elio guys and welcome back to another episode of Infinite Magic Raid and if this is your first time here hey welcome to the game I hope you guys enjoy it if you wanted to see more in-depth information that is provided in this video and outside of this video feel free to join the subreddit on the subreddit I not only have a tier list of the units but I also have a definitive beginner's guide that goes from the beginning of campaign all the way to the end so you won't want to miss out on that but let's go ahead and start with tip number five Alright, so one of the biggest things about Infinite Magic Raid is making sure that you have a guild. And you may be asking yourself, well, why would I join a guild? I'm perfectly fine being a loner here. That's not the case. So if you come over here to the guild, we have access to the guild boss and also the guild arena. Both of these guys provide lovely rewards here, but the best part about the guild boss is not only can you kind of challenge yourself in terms of getting like the highest damage in your guild, but we also have this lovely activeness tab. If you click on it, we can see the lovely rewards that we get uh, ranging from the lovely blue shards for your summons. You get gems, which can be converted over to energy for events. Very important here. I'll talk about that later. There is a uh, another purple wish, more energy. We get a epic skill scroll to help boost up the effectiveness of your epic unit. More gems, and most importantly is going to be the legendary skill scroll because a lot of your team is going to be a mix in between epics and legendaries, but if you can get your legendaries pumped up, especially with their exclusive levels being higher than your epics or near where your epics is rocking, then you're going to get a whole bunch of damage out of here. So the greatest part about the legendary scroll is that not only can you use it on legendary units, but also mythic units kind of taking your infinite magic raid game up to the next level. All right, so next up, we're going to come over here to the market and hopefully I can answer your questions with that. So you may be like, Elio, I just started the game. I saw your guide. What else should I be purchasing from this? Well, if you read the guide, you will know. But since this is video format here, I'll break it down to you nice and easy. So in terms of the currency store, there's a couple of main things that you can really focus on here. And I've already took the liberty of buying these things. So units are the best way to pop your other units because you take like a weak unit like patrol, you feed them to other units, power him up, and then feed them to the unit that you want to ascend to their next level. I mentioned before in Guild Boss with Awakening, Awakening is part of that system of where you feed the smaller or the weaker units into, you know, a greater unit to feed to your best unit to just make that best unit even better. But you can also get these refined rune shards in here. There's occasionally um, Miracle Wishes that pop up and also the lovely Purple Wishes, which at least guarantees you a three star unit, which is always great. So make sure you guys are purchasing that. Uh, experience is something that you want to purchase too if you have the excess gold to do so because after about level 120 in the game it gets a little bit rough trying to level up your uh, units through the campaign so my suggestion honestly is to kind of if you can swing it like level unit up manually through the campaign up until 120 and then start dumping some potions in there that way the lower levels aren't wasted with experience potions that you're constantly buying every day there's also a lovely three star unit in here. They pop up occasionally. Make sure you get those. And outside of that, you will see the multiple battle uh, energy sign, which instead of the stamina, which is yellow, that one's purple. You wanna buy that one too, even though it costs like X amount of gems, because in terms of the events, which I'll cover in a different video, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to do that event because you can literally set it, forget it, come back and reap all the rewards in here too. And in terms of gear, I don't really purchase the gear because this is like basic gear. This is nothing spicy the spicy stuff is in the forge so if you want to purchase equipment to help you with the battle pass then I'm perfectly fine with that because it could mitigate you from doing a different event because you're wasting stamina on trying to get like a five star drop from that area when you're farming a completely different area so other than that I wouldn't really touch gear so the main thing to take away from here is units you want shards you want experience potions if miracle wishes pop up or the purple wishes feel free to purchase those also the multi battle stamina and uh, they are on like a rotation here uh, mine isn't popping up today but you will also see like four star dragon eggs and five star dragon eggs now five star dragon eggs have a one week cooldown so they pop up once a week make sure you purchase those via gems and the same thing with the four star dragon eggs which pop up I think roughly every three and a half days so make sure you're buying those the rest is up to your discretion but yeah make sure you guys are purchasing those and then in terms of the arena store here, a good bet is always going for this four star dragon egg. If you can swing it, then you can get something up 
in the higher tiers here but as you just begin the game it may be a bit hard getting up here but you can definitely get up here i mean it just takes time so another good purchase is going to be oakman if you haven't pulled him yet or if you're trying to ascend a uh, oakman that you already own because this is a nice farmable way to get him and with recent changes to the game too they've made arena a little bit better in terms of farming so he shouldn't take too long for you guys to gather up outside of that uh, the scrolls are nice too if you have the excess coins to do so but i mainly focus on the eggs and uh yeah and last up is the event store here so this may or may not change over time i'm unsure about that but if you get enough currency my go-to once again is going to be that five star dragon egg because i can then feed that to one of my units to help awaken them to the next level and make them stronger and make them more stable that's just that's just it uh, if you want to go about the Miracle Rune route, then feel free to do that too. Uh, there's also excellent runes in here, which is the lovely Purple Wishes, Event Skill Scrolls, and also the 3 and 4 star Dragon Eggs. But my whole goal with the stores is kind of buying certain things out of each and every one of them. And, you know, not really overlapping too much. Because if you overlap, not saying that it's going to be a bad thing, but you're going to run out of something eventually. So having a spread of the resources, at least in my opinion, is the best bet to go here. But there's really nothing wrong that you can get out of here. But yeah, make sure you're focusing on that 5 star dragon egg first. Because that gets a whole bunch of farming out of your way. And that gets you access to getting your units powered up as soon as possible. And then coming in with tip number three, you guys, this is very important, just like any other gacha game out there, or basically any other mobile game in existence here, is use your energy. But however, what you should do is use your energy wisely. Let me correct that for you guys. So with energy, we do get a generous amount here. We can also purchase more energy, which is what I do every single day from the resource shop for 40 gems, just 200 extra energy. I don't really bother with the rest of this stuff because, well, it isn't very amazing at all and it, sh it should be something that you may buy once in a blue moon just to be honest because you want to save those gems for your dragon eggs but after purchasing the energy here there's a couple of different ways you can go about this uh, the number one way I make sure that I'm using my energy to the best of my ability is after I log in I click over here to the uh, event tab and I check to see what's going on so it looks like there's a dwarven ruins equipment trial going on I'll click on that we can see what rewards we get okay I get mythic stones from doing this which if you guys hit 100 mythic stones you then get access to you know summoning an actual mythic which is a huge game changer and pretty much the late game meta for infinite magic raid here so the event is showing me that I I can get mythic stones so I'm in that's already an event that I want to invest in so then I'm gonna slide over here to the go button we're gonna hit that it's gonna bring up where the events taking place at in the Dwarven ruins and then we're gonna go ahead and hit Ifrit over here and then you will start blowing your stamina now I did mention before with the prior tip of the marketplace is the lovely multi battle stamina which is the purple right here what you would simply do is click on that and you know you would set whatever stamina uh, amount that you have and making sure that you have energy enough to kind of hit that requirement to do the runs that you want to do we'll max it out I'll hit confirm and let multi battle take everything away so that way I'm farming the event in a more idle state so with multi battle going on in the background I'm free to close the game out or come back later to it I'm free to have the game running I could go play other games you know I can do other stuff in the game like you know tweak the equipment of my character etc making the best use of my time while I wait for the multi battle to conclude and that pretty much summarizes what you should do in terms of the events so you don't kind of like burn your fingers out because if you're constantly doing the event manually then you have to sit here and hit try again try again try again try again and for players using phones especially this can be problematic but for players using emulators well there's always an easier way to do that but that's one of the biggest tips going forward in terms of energy here now you may say for instance well Elio I just began a game I can't really participate in events or I've already done the event I've gotten the reward I don't feel like pushing up past the um, 10,000 point to get any more mythic shards because there's no more rewards and I simply can't beat the rankings because other players have paid money and they're at the top of the chart for a reason. The other thing I do if there's no events going on, I will stockpile stamina and then I'll simply come over here to the campaign. And if you're a newer player, you won't have as many stars as I have, even though I'm missing 40 from maxing out the entire campaign at the time of this video. What I'd like to do is, especially if you've hit like the hell stage, I'll come over here and I'll run like stage 310 or basically the boss stage of whatever of the stages that I can auto on like 100% team never fails and I'll let that go. 
I'll come over here to challenge. You can then uh, pick a unit that you need to level up. Say for instance, I need to pick someone that is not level 100 yet. We'll come over here, we'll pick a unit to level up, and I'll start battle. And we'll have the battle keep going and going and going and going and going until all of my energy is out. That way not only am I gaining experience for the unit that needs to be leveled up because I can then use that unit over there in like the faction uh, area of the game, but I'm also receiving, you know, some gold. There's some gear that I can sell, which is actually more gold for me. And the most important piece about this is that we're getting um, a chance to get fodder or more units that naturally drop from farming out these stages. Now the higher stage that you have, the higher probability of you getting a better unit, like a three star unit. I do have this information available uh, in my definitive beginner's guide, which I mentioned at the beginning of the video via Reddit. And also, you know, a tier list is lovely to have too in terms of what you guys should be leveling up. But that's the gist of it. So if you're not burning your energy either in the campaign because you may be stuck trying to get through content, fodder is going to be something that you always need in this game. And if you've already burned it in terms of the event or you're unable to do the event, you need to burn it somewhere because wasted energy is just wasted potential. All right, and then tip number two, you guys, is going to be focusing on one unit here. So what do I mean by focus on one unit? Well, due to Infinite Magic Raid's uh, system here, what happens with our unit as we level them up past level 100 is they break into a cap of where stars are applied to them, and this is what we refer to as Awakening. So the max Awakening for a character is Awaken 5, and this costs a whole bunch of other 5 stars to feed into them, which I can't do for my Sia because she is maxed. So if I go over here to Luna and click her, this is what I was talking about with the fodder. We, we need five uh, five stars in order to awaken her to awaken five. And with that, we see a huge uh, increase into not only her uh, basic stats, but also her speed, which is important uh, a little bit later on into the game here. So having that fodder, that reoccurring fodder to kind of level up and get to the correct star amount to feed to your units is extremely dire here. So by focusing on your main DPS, uh, is going to be a very big deal because one A5 unit shouldn't have any problems kind of carrying you from the beginning of the campaign up until the end of Nightmare. Maybe you can even break into hell with certain A5 units by themselves. But that needs to be your main DPS because they're going to carry your butt that far. After that though, you're not going to get too far into the game with only one A5, just letting you know that. I've tested it myself. It's not going to work here. But by focusing on that one unit, you can not only work on getting them up to A5, which is the most costly and the most time consuming thing outside of, you know, you just beginning the game and getting a whole bunch of summons going, but you can also kind of focus on their gear, getting their emblems established because that opens up the emblem dungeon a little bit later in the game to help modify their stats and make them as strong as possible. And the added bonus too is that for PVP, you can always drop this unit in here with like a healer at the beginning stages of the game and, you know, taunt other players to try and take your one unit out with their team of uh, five A1 units and just watch them be destroyed. So make sure you're focusing on that one unit at the initial stage to get you progressing as fast as possible because more stars on the campaign means more auto rewards over here if we click this chest. And more auto rewards is always a great thing because if you're not playing the game, you can come back, oh look, I got a free... Uh, um, three star. I got a free two star. That's going to help with ascending the other units to get my other units up to Awaken 3 and Awaken 5, etc. as fast as possible. So it's a win-win situation. And then for the final tip, you guys, it's going to be dailies. Do your dailies. There's no reason why you shouldn't do your dailies, which I will cover in a separate video here of me speaking essentially speed running dailies. This isn't a game where dailies will take you all day. This isn't a game where dailies will take you 30 minutes. Heck, I would even go as far as to say that dailies won't even take you 20 minutes. It may be 15 minutes max depending on your speed and, you know, of you getting kind of accustomed to the game here. But by doing dailies, we get these lovely rewards like shards, which is always nice to have. We get gems. Once again, we need those. There's also classic arena tickets for PvP, so you can PvP more, which PvP is a whole separate conversation, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that in a different video. Uh, there's also stamina. I love free stamina that can go towards events that can go towards awakening and ascending my other units farming out emblems for them that can go a long way 150 stamina 
150 extra stamina every day goes a long way over time. And most importantly, just by doing your dailies every day, you're guaranteed at least one pull of a potential legendary. I said potential, there is a small probability of you getting a legendary out of one of these guys, and a legendary always brings a smile to my face. So make sure you're doing that, stockpile those bad boys, and get things popping off in terms of like the whole events where Infinite Magic Raid gives you guys free rewards if you stockpile your wishes and wish during a certain time in the game, which is usually the weekend. So it's just a win-win scenario of why you should be doing your dailies. And if that's not enough to convince you, if you slide over here to the advanced quest, just by doing your dailies, it's very easy to kind of max this out here and we can see some of the rewards that we get. So once again, we get more shards, there's more stamina, gotta love it, wishes, purple wishes, we get more gems, we get a miracle wish too, there's more stamina, we get a four star dragon egg, and then we also get the supreme wish, which has a higher probability of getting us a legendary versus the purple wishes, because the supreme wishes are locked in between four stars and five star units. So it's overall just a win-win scenario. And right before I wrap things up, you guys, I want to leave you with one bonus tip here, and it's super easy, anyone could do it, is your dispatch tab. Make sure every time you close this game out that these things are running, unlike this situation of what I'm doing right now. Make sure this is running, because we get access to lovely free gold just by, you know, idling the game. You can have it closed, come back later, and these guys will be done. There's lovely gems for uh, refreshing in terms of stamina. We get experience potions. We essentially get all the important things that we need here, which isn't much in the grand scheme of things, but once again, if you're going through this multiple times during the day you get your dispatch level up for a higher level quest you will get better rewards like 300,000 gold that is smiley face gaming because i can burn that in two seconds with my equipment for my characters which we do have a lot to build but yeah make sure your dispatch tab looks like this all the time just to make sure that other rewards are coming in here because you're getting a lot of resources from a whole bunch of different areas in the game all at once and that's going to help you tremendously as you continue on through infinite magic raid here you guys but i definitely hope you guys enjoyed the video and once again if you guys are interested in seeing more content from me hit like make sure you subscribe to the channel come hang out with us over there on the infinite magic raid discord check out the subreddit if you haven't already and yeah hopefully guys you enjoyed the game and i'll see you in the next one